to be allowed in this competition. The Russians originally wanted Omolenchik and Shushinova to be with Yurchenko, but things went wrong because they made mistakes in the team competition and little Baraksanova and Mostapanova finished in front of them. Now, that's not the main reason for them replacing them, though. What's happened is that they're scared silly of Katie Zabo, and the new game plan is stop Zabo anyway. And they feel that with Shushinova in there uh, with Omelinchik, they've got much more chance of doing so. The thinking goes like this. Those two, if things go right, have got enormous difficulty in their routines. And they will be going on to two key pieces of apparatus before Zabo. They think that Zabo was overscored in the team event. And if they can get their people on with these difficult routines and get them to score well, that they'll therefore mean that the, the judges won't be able to score Zabo so high. Just one quick example. Shushinova is capable of doing a double twisting Yurchenko on vault. She goes on vault first. Zabo comes onto that piece after her. Now, we know that she'll do a single twisting Yurchenko. Now, they won't be able to give her comparatively as high a mark. This is legitimate, presumably, is it? It's legitimate, but uh, whether it's desirable is another thing. 15-year-old Oksana Almolenchik is just 4 feet 7 inches tall and weighs 4 stone 8 pounds. But into that tiny frame, she packs enough power to complete two tumbling runs back to back with a total of nine moves. Elena Shushinova is also 50, but put together an acrobatic sequence on the four-inch wide beam that would be a credit on the floor, with a maturity far beyond her years. Five feet two, Natalia Yurchenko is tall for a gymnast. She's wonderfully elegant, but also strong enough to put two men's high bar moves together in combination on the asymmetrics. In total contrast, Daniela Silibash from Romania is only four feet five. She's no chance of emulating the grace of Yurchenko, so she chooses dance moves to show off her chirpy character. The East German Gabriella Farnrich gained the perfect 10 for her set exercise on bars and almost did it again in the team event voluntaries, scoring 9.975. also has amazing power in a frail looking body. Look at the lift on this ball. Ekaterina Zabo has a much more mature body, but her dexterity is illustrated perfectly in this floor routine. Seven tumbles in one diagonal run. Finally, Elena Shushinova again, this time showing a high-tariff men's bar dismount, a double somersault with full twist on the A-bars. Well, a full house here will witness performances of that order in the competition to find the best woman gymnast in the world. Well, I'm delighted to say that Barry Winch is with us once again. Uh, of course, he's just finished competing in his fifth world championship. And equally delighted that we're joined in the team by the British champion, Hayley Price. Over. And Andrea Awok from Canada is going to be the first to go on the vault. The order of starting on all the pieces of apparatus made by draw. So there's no advantage having finished higher in the initial things. Here she goes, and it's a straight Sukahara. Tremendous 
screaming roar from the Canadian crowd. They've really got behind their gymnast in these championships, really enjoying themselves. A slow motion view of the vault. As much speed as possible on the runway, a half turn onto the horse, and the gymnast must show a straight body line before light alighting. Now, of course, the women have two vaults. So if that first one is a bit disastrous, at least they've got another go, unlike the men. The only time the men get two attempts on the vault is in the individual apparatus final. And Andrea Awok uh, came into these finals. There's a score, 9.55. I was going to say she came into these finals in 27th position, so she's not a contender for medals. It means a great deal just to raise your position two or three further up that top 36. Here she goes. And the same vault again, of course, and that was better. She didn't have quite so much adjustment on landing. Canadians doing really well, having three people in this top 36. Somebody like Andrea, not used to big competitions, concentrating well with the music from the floor going on behind her. Good position there, held it as long as she could. That's the secret, the judges like to see that position held. From the gymnast's point of view, it's very satisfying to get one piece of apparatus under their belt, it really relaxes them. Vault is very good, oh, and there's the score, 9.6 for that second vault. Brief glimpse of Hannah Rishna, but now Elena Shushanova waiting to go on the vault. Now, I wonder what she's going to do, Monica. Is she going to play safe on her first vault and then go for a big one on the second? Or what? Because she's capable of anything, this girl, isn't she? Yes, we have seen her, in fact, practice a double twisting Yurchenko, but I don't think she'll go for that straight away. But a very high full twisting Yurchenko. That was a magnificent vault. Tremendous vault in control all the way through the flight and landed it without any movement at all. Be interesting to see what she gets for this. This is exactly what they meant by putting pressure on Zabo. Look at that lovely twist. So much time to get through it, Monica. Yes, an incredible lift from the top of the horse. Of course, the vaults all tariffed and the full twisting Yurchenko is a 10? Yes, it's a full 10 tariff, but they don't get any extra benefit for a double twist, but it's a good score, 9.875. Now, she, in fact, is going to repeat the same vault. We know that because there's a scoreboard just behind her on which the gymnast has to put up a number. This one's 461, and that in the code book is the full twisting Yurchenko. Well, I don't think that one was quite as good. She was a little bit short, didn't get the same lovely flight off the horse. No, that's right. She under-rotated the vault and had to land in a folded position, not an upright position, and she should get deducted for that. Tremendous power down the runway. Hands on the floor first, then feet on the board. Shallow flight and just look at the lift. But she had to pike it in heavily and drop the chest on landing. Eight seven five Shushinova score the same for the second vault and to the beam. This is the West German Andrew Wilhelm. West Germans have done very well in these championships. Very nerve-wracking piece of apparatus on which to start the competition. Yes, that's another thing that's uh, going against Zabo, isn't it, Monica? She's got to start on this piece of apparatus. 
Yes, and I don't envy her her task at all. But I think she's got plenty of motivation to perform really well because she's really after the gold. All that cheering in the background for Kathy Giancaspro, the Canadian girl coming off the floor. And the beam, the worst piece of apparatus. Oh, that's a nice finish from the West German. Beautiful. Flick, flack, flick, flack. Down the beam and into that double twisting back somersault to finish. A closer look at some of the movements on beam. A one-legged handspring to land in the crouch position. And that should have been continuous into the flick, flack with the half twist. This code is all about linking together skills of highly rated difficulty. Yes, at one time it was enough just to put in, for instance, the Olga Corbett back somersault. That at that time was considered very innovative and very, very difficult. Now, you've really got to link these moves together. Here she goes, one flick, two flicks. In fact, it was three flicks before she went into the dismount. And there's the double twist to finish off with. And there's the score, 9.275 for Angie Wilhelm. Glimpse there of Daniela Silivas, the tiny little Romanian. Just about to start her beam routine. At least the one advantage Daniela has above all the other gymnasts is that that beam looks like a main road to her. She's got such tiny feet. She's also not so high above the ground as the others. Just four feet, five inches. Oh, beautiful. Whip back somersault there and just not a wobble at all as she landed. A very nice little move there into the shoulder roll. The judge is really looking for unusual skills that look quite simple but they take an awful lot of practice and it's nice to have something very individual that no other gymnast in the arena can perform oh a sensational sequence there three whip back somersaults off one leg The routine must last a minimum of one minute and 15 seconds and a maximum of one minute and 30 seconds. And look, Arab Spring flick, double back somersault. She just treats the beam like a floor. And there we see flick flack. Free back walk over, free back walk over. This amazing finish, Arab Spring flick flack to build the speed and then a double back. That takes a tremendous amount of courage. Silvas came into this last 36 in eighth place, and if she keeps performing like that, she could knock a few gymnasts off on a climb to the top there's a score 9.85 a sensational start for her following her onto the beam the leader of the competition katie zabo looking as cool as ice but i wonder what's going on inside her head at the moment the preparation these gymnasts go through it includes psychological preparation so she's taught how to handle this sort of situation and i think we'd all like to know the secret to that big psychological barrier out of the way
And she's off. That could cost her the championship, and it probably will. She did that move perfectly without so much of a wobble. It's a very difficult move because she takes that one leg intentionally down the side of the beam. But that time, I'm afraid, both win. Of course, the unfortunate thing about selecting a front somersault in a beam routine is that it is a blind landing. A little ooh in the background. Uh, I'm sure she is not even aware of it, but might give a little bit of heart because at the same time, Yurchenko's on the floor and she just stepped out of the arena. Zabo looking very dejected with that. But she's got to pick herself up. Three pieces to go. It's not yet a disaster. But it's going to be very tough. She's given herself a mountain to climb, Monica. Yes, and a psychological advantage to the others. There's the fall. The head drops as she recovers. And to the dismount, no doubt she'll heave a sigh of relief. And it's a good one. A good double back, but that won't mend the situation. girls waiting to go on beam will be feeling nervous because both performers have fallen off the beam so far there's Zabo looking very very sad probably not sad probably very annoyed John I think a bit both oh and there's the score got marked down very heavily 9.125 they're being very tough on the beam and that takes on the proportions of a, a mammoth disaster now if she got away with a 9.4, I think she'd have been very, very happy and uh, it wouldn't have been too bad, but that's two to three tenths worse than she might have expected, Monica. Yes, it was amazingly low, especially comparing her routine to Klutz, who went before her. Andrea Ladanyi from Hungary. Lovely front somersault. She landed that one well, too. Well, that's a technical fall because she held on to the apparatus, so even though she didn't land on the floor, she will lose the same 0.5. She's in 20th position, coming into this final, um, not in with a chance of the medals. Not really having a very good day. Another minor adjustment there, but all extra movements to maintain balance mean a loss of perhaps only one tenth, but championships are won by thousands of a point these days. Andrea preparing for her dismount. A double back. Well, so far, three performers and two rear falls and one technical fall. Replay of that uh, very difficult uh, start to her routine. Risking everything there. Nothing could be more off-putting than to fall on your, your very first move. And this is where that technical fall occurred. Just watch, she bends down and she actually holds the beam to prevent her from falling from it. The score has just come up, 9.25. Oksana Omelenchik about to start her competition on the asymmetric bars.
there, a Delta somersault and then straight down to the low bar. She really is a lovely gymnast, Monica. Absolute brilliance. What fascinates me is her head position. It's always in beautiful line with the body. Look at the full twist flying over the bottom bar. It's like a monkey on poles. And the double twist dismount. A great start from her. No room yet for a smile, but I'm sure we'll see one if she goes on like that. There, her coach on the floor, on the podium with her. A closer look in slow motion at some of the brilliance. Just look at the straight line in those handstands. Into the double twisting back away, coming off the bar on the backswing and twisting round twice in one somersault. Omelenchik, the, the real new find in the Russian team. We knew they intended her to be in their top three because her personal coach was with her, but she made a little bit of a mess of the plans and now she's in there to do a job for Yurchenko and there's her score 9.8 she's doing it so far the Romanian girl Camelia Voynia she'll be hoping to fight back and perhaps open the way for a big score for Katie Zabo. Jaeger somersault. Camelia hasn't had any international experience at all. This is her first major championship. A very nice routine, not with a tremendous amount of difficulty, but what she had in there was very, very well performed. Well, that straddle to high bar. Up to the handstand. The giant circle. Building up speed, momentum. There's the double somersault dismount. Nine point seven has gone. Preparing for the asymmetric bars, the highest Chinese girl coming into this competition, Quan Chung, but only in seventeenth place. They really haven't put a good showing in so far. Not one Chinese girl in the top ten. just very delicately spitting on her hand guards to make sure that she gets exactly the right amount of adhesion. This is a beautiful sequence, an endo right through to handstand, half turn and stalled her, and then into the Katchev movement. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Lovely lines all the way through. There, the 
A catch of that really is a catch of a lot of the girls do a sort of back straddle and don't get high over the bar but she really did get some lift yes the Chinese ability to go from the up start which is this movement here into handstand is quite amazing nice straight armed lift this is called a clear circle they go around the bar without touching it other than with the hands the stalder invented by a man of that name and then the shoot front with a hard fist. See the special hand grips that the girls are wearing. They have a fold above the fingers to stop the friction and stop the wearing away of the hands on the bar. There is score, 9.7. A chance now to see on tape Natalia Yurchenko's floor exercise. Here she goes. This the defending champion, full in back out, and there's the step out of the 12-meter area that I referred to. Oh, that lovely middle tumbling run there whip back somersault in the middle and they've still got the pace to keep going and put a double somersault on the back end of it. did that first full in back out and so she didn't get too much of a deduction a deduction 9.75 her score that's a steady start still in the lead 49.075 and the two young russians brought in to do just that job because of that mistake by zabo already up into second place 48.888 i think we ought to explain that these strange scores coming up 0.888, which we don't normally see in gymnastics competitions, is because they've changed the judging system only in the women's events. They now have six judges instead of the four. And those six judges, they discard top and bottom marks. And from there, they average out the middle four. That's why you get these strange numbers. And Ulrika Klutz to the floor. She had a Disaster on beam, she now has to try and make amends. Beautiful full in back out. Not very tall, only just five foot, but extremely fit. And it gives her a tremendous amount of length. Look at those long young legs. It's like a foal. twist there very difficult That was a very good routine there. It's nice to see 
some of the girls wearing a little bit of makeup and making themselves look really feminine perhaps something that the russians could follow the first tumble run from Ulrike Klutz. All these girls at the top now, including a twisting double back somersault in their exercise. Reaching out, really looking for length. And that was the last tumble, making sure that she doesn't step back out of the floor area. Good to see the East Germans have got a lot of uh, new strength in depth because they are missing a, a few of their great stars. Maxi Gnauk, who has been one of the top women gymnasts in the world for the past seven or eight years, not here at these championships. And there's the score for Klerts. That's a lovely score, 9.825. Well, we're in for a treat here if Daniela Silivash from Romania can repeat or better the exercise that she performed in the team event. Just sit back and watch this. the middle tumble a brilliant triple twist and then she had the audacity to pop in another full twisting double back and in between all that some delightful perky dancing a full house for this competition and they really are getting their money's worth here a chance to see that first tumbling run the whip back somersault in the middle back into the flip flax and still enough height and speed and rotation there at the end to complete the full in back out so really this is the remarkable one the strength to be able to put this one in at the end of a routine yes john it was really brilliant and so well performed i mean in slow motion it draws attention to the little faults and a well-deserved score 9.9 .9. Audience don't like it too much. They'd have liked a 10. Katie Zabo now following that brilliant floor exercise from Silivash. And she must perform at least as well as that if she's to have any chance of even creeping back up towards the medals. I really do think with a score as low as that... 9.125 on the first piece of apparatus the beam and that dreadful error she's right out of it now monica yes she she'll just have to go through the competition as best she can because you never know when somebody else can 
make a mistake. Pull him back out, piked. really tremendous. One and a half twister, flick flack, double twister, punch front, one and a half twist, sorry. Double tuck back somersault, a lovely routine in a totally different vein, a totally different tempo to little Silivash. The Romanian's very good at choreographing and choosing the right music to suit the gymnast. Look at Sabo's very powerful tumbling. She looks quite a big girl, but she's not. She's just under five feet tall and under seven stone. Yes, it's, it's very, very easy to get the wrong impression of the size of these girls because, of course, you're comparing them all the time with the other ones on the floor. And little Silivash, for instance, just four feet five inches. And here, the final tumble. Lovely extension in her flick flack. to the double back. There's the score, 9.85. She couldn't match Silivash. Natalia Yuchenko's already vaulted. Fine vault from her, 9.875. Andrea Ladani from Hungary. So all the girls we recently saw on beam now on floor because there's a correct order in which the girls have to travel. Vault to asymmetric bars, then to beam and then to floor. routine there from Aunt Andrea, but not in the same class as the Romanians. But even she's got into there the, uh, the full in back up somersault. It's soon going to be compulsory. And of course, with having to produce a D element, which is worth 0.8, the gymnasts really have to stretch themselves. Bit of an uncomfortable landing and losing several tenths on that exit from the tumble.
Well, it's a, a really, really exciting afternoon's gymnastics already. We're only part of the way through the second rotation, and it's lived up to everything. I suppose the question now, Monica, is can Yurchenko hold off? There's the score for Ladanyi, 9.675. The question really, can Yurchenko hold off the, the threat of Omelenchik and Shushinova? There she is still in the lead, but it's not much, only just, in fact, just under 0.1. So half a slip or one or two brilliant exercises from them, and we do know they're capable of it. They've, of course, both scored tens for the floor, and that could take them there, couldn't it? Yes, I think it may be just a matter of personality that could uh, make the difference. Amelie Enchik is really something special as regards her personality in her routine. She really does project her feelings to the judges and the audience. Our director, very fond of showing just how important these championships are, likes the world to see the number of people who've come to Canada to cover them. We're somewhere down the far end. But at this point, we're going to leave the competition, but I can assure you it's only a momentary pause because we're going to continue with the action. We're going to keep you right up to date with this marvellous event for the three Russians fighting out a very tight battle at the top on Channel 4 in just a moment. See you then. Oksana... Amelinczyk he presents herself to the judges. A big wobble, but it was a very difficult combination. What fascinates me, John, is the pace at which they work on the beam. They really do go through it almost automatically. One can see that they've been through these routines hundreds of times. Very clever little movement on the end there. Yes, yeah, some gymnasts who uh, haven't got too much content slow everything down so they don't have to do too much in the min minimum period. But the, uh, the Russian girls and the top gymnasts, look at that, those two forward rolls there. The, the Russian girls and the top Romanians really doing the opposite, trying to get as much in as they possibly can. And a double twist dismount. Lovely exercise, but she had that fairly big mistake early in the exercise. Now they've been marking quite severely, and they certainly hammered Katie Zabo when she made a mistake. Let's have a put ourselves on the line, Monica. What would you guess they're going to take off for that? Well, I can't, I can't really see that she deserves uh, any less than 0.2 for that wobble. And I think possibly a score of around 9.75, 9.8, but possibly I'm hanging myself. I'll go down to 9.7. It really does depend, however objective they try and make the judging, and there's the head judge, the lady to our right, the great Ludmilla Tereshova, and she's known to be scrupulously fair, but at the end of the day, however objective they do make the judging, there's a certain amount of subjectivity, and it depends how they saw it. She's there pointing to the video screen which she has in front of her. All the judges' marks are up there, and if they are too wide a range, then they have to discuss it before they go through it. If the marks are within 0.2 or 
There's no problem. They take out the top and the bottom and average the middle four. But if there's a wider divergence, then the head judge wants to know why. And there's Teresha for asking for a slip of paper to see exactly what the deductions amount to because sometimes a judge can overlook something and they must see it from the same point of view. 9.9, .9, John, we were both wrong on that score. Well, I'm afraid that is a bit of a gift. Uh, I really can't accept that that wobble, they're allowed to deduct just point one, but uh, I do think that was a gift. And I don't think the judges do the sport any service by that sort of marking. Camelia Voynia from Romania. Even though these are voluntary exercises, the code of points, that's the rule book for gymnastics, states that some movements must be shown in the routine. For example, two large leaps and a 360 degree turn. Movements are divided into categories of A. Oh, a fun twisting back somersault from a cartwheel. Well, one doesn't mind her falling off on a move like that. Very few seen in the world. I'm afraid the judges do, though. It's still going to cost a point five, But that's the, the sort of uh, decision the gymnast has to make. They need to put the difficulty in their routine if they're to make the very, very top echelon. And they sometimes pay for it. Well, in Camellia's case, she won't have a tremendous amount to lose from it because she doesn't stand a chance of a medal, so she can put that one down to experience and a Sukahara dismount piked. Shushinova just onto the asymmetric vase. She's only just started this exercise. Watch this middle section. And that's a super routine. Only girl in the world doing that dismount. Two somersaults with a full twist in them, called a full in, back out. And in the middle of the routine, a catch of and a ginga. Traveling very nicely over and under both bars. Chance to see that again. That's the Ginga somersault. Sorry, no, that's the full twisting double back ended. Well, this is going to be some story unfolding here. The battle between the Russians. Katie Zabo falling on her first piece of apparatus, the beam. Going right out of it. And that's 9.9 .9 for Shushanova. This well, we could all be made to eat our words uh, about the Russians substituting Shushinova and Omelenchik for Mostopanova and Baraksanova because uh, we could well see with this sort of mark they're getting at the moment either Omelenchik or Shushinova actually winning the gold medal instead of just clearing the way for Yurchenko. I think the battle's right on there now. Sabrina Ma from the USA onto the floor. She's had a long wait, big delay in the judging of the last competitor, but here she goes.
she had a shaky first tumble but recovered well nice exercise there again you could see a very very big contrast in the level of difficulty in the tumbles uh, compared to the very top girls a closer look at one of Sabrina's tumbles Sabrina is supposed to be Mary Lou Ritten's successor she's certainly doing well the top American scorer in this top 36 and this is the triple twist but she did fall badly sideways out of it yes the slow-mo always very revealing they get round fully in the end but you very often see that the last half of the third twist when they're going for that one is done on the floor And there's Sabrina's score, 9.65, and for that routine, that's a very good score. This session of the championships sold out weeks ago, and uh, everybody really buzzing with excitement because the uh, two young Russians edging closer and closer to Yurchenko, the defending world champion. This is Yang Yan Li from China onto the beam. Yang Yan Li, China's number one, trains at the Peking Gymnastic Institute where the top 32 male and female gymnasts train together. Yes, it's interesting to see the way the different nations uh, approach preparation of their international teams. The Russians have a number of centers around the country. The great club at Vladimir and there's another at Kiev, there's the Moscow Club, and another in Leningrad. Of course, a very big country, but so is China, and they go for a different approach. They sift through all their talent and bring all the top men and the top women to Peking, and they all train together at the Athletics Institute there. Oh, yes, yeah, she controlled that landing well. She could feel it going off a little bit. Very necessary quality that the gymnast ha has to have is is balance and they don't always find that as easy as one would imagine Even the boldest with which they skip along that beam surprises me. A bad step back out of the double back. But it's quite a nice routine there from Yang Yang Lee. I always feel, Monica, that the gymnasts are most exposed on the beam. You've been up there. Are you more conscious of the crowd because you're up at that height uh, above the podium, performing an exercise that's quite slow at times? Uh, on the A bars, of course, it's a very much faster routine. The vault's all over in a flash. But up on the beam, you're up there and exposed for a long time no john i can honestly say i could never remember hearing or seeing the crowd only in, when i'd finished the exercise and i'm sure it's the same you know you put yourself in a total world of your own and it's only if you've fallen off a couple of times that you start to think about what's going on elsewhere Yang Yang Li's number. The red lights on the top of the scoreboard signaling that the gymnast is not allowed to go on the podium and they go to green on the other corners when the judges give the okay. Once more, they've had a fair old problem on the beam so far today the judges in disagreement over almost every routine and it's taking a long time to get through 
Well, with Ludmilla as head judge, she really is very strict. She does like to see fair play, and even if it takes the first half of the competition to get the judges thinking of the same mind, she won't mind that. There is the score. Good one for her, 9.725. And waiting to go on the beam is Hannah Rishna from Czechoslovakia. Hannah really had quite a good competition in the first section in the team event, but then had a bad fall on the floor. Lost 0.5, and she could have really been up in the top seven had it not been for that fall. attention of the whole arena of course all the four pieces go on at the same time but the beam being a long piece of apparatus in any case with a, a maximum length of the exercise being one minute 30 uh, all the other rotations are finished now this John is where Hannah might well be distracted because you know you're so used to having work uh, working on the beam rather whilst the floor music is playing and the absence of music is likely to make her feel strange and she might be aware of the hustle and bustle of people moving around well she's going well came in at 14th place a little bit offline there though with that double back somersault dismount of that dismount cowboy is it that's putting the legs apart and tucking the hands in behind them to help the rotation but gets there Yurchenko on the vault here she goes that's the vault named after her does it straight beautifully executed straight Yurchenko there a lot of people now using that vault Monica Yes, I'd be interested to see if they sh show it in slow motion because she didn't look as though she spent much time on the top of the horse with her hands. We'll have a chance to see that now. There's the Arab Spring. Yes, she took it off the fingertips, so really she should be heavily penalised for that, but it remains to be seen whether she is. There, the score for that, 9.75. But that, her first vault, and of course the girls have two, so she's got a chance to put that right on the second one, and she will we'll be looking for a lot more lift and a much heavier plant onto the horse, Monica. Yes, she'll need that because hopefully this time she should put in a full twist. And she needs the height off the top of the horse to enable her to do that. Ah, that was better, but still not good enough. It was better, but by her standards, it was a little bit low. Nevertheless, she landed it beautifully, and I'm sure she's going to get marked well for it because it is a 10-tariff vault. Just notice that she doesn't get the heel of the hand onto the horse, just the fingertips, and that causes her reverse action, and she doesn't really get the rotation required. at that anxiety pacing up and down 9.875 I think she'll be relieved with that not her best fault but she got away with it and Dagmar Kirsten from East Germany for her vault Dagmar came into the competition in third place now that's an unusual vault a quervo with a full twist and very well executed as well Kirsten sitting there now in fourth place behind the three Russians and really just waiting for a slip. Now look at this complicated vault. It's a handspring on, not a half twist on, and then the half twist comes then. That's right, but she did a full twist 
Cuervo is usually only a half distance. She had an added, added half anyway. Let's see what she gets for that. 9.775. Good by most people's standards, but uh, not good enough. There we are after two rotations. Yurchenko still in the lead. Omelinchik and Shushanova still locked together there in second place. Dagmar Kirsten in fourth place, waiting for that slip. And Daniela, uh, Daniela Silva. Natalia Yurchenko, very pensive, just waiting while all the other gymnasts do their warm-up routines on the asymmetric bars. The gymnasts on the A bars given an extra amount of time because the bars, of course, are adjustable. They've got a, a ratchet between the uh, lower bar and the high bar. And according to your height, what is the actual uh, length that you can change the adjustment by, Monica? Well, the minimum is 89 centimeters and uh, all bars have a varying uh, maximum according to the make of the bars. These are the most modern, so it'll go out to something like 150 centimeters. And of course you need it because the difference in height of the girl gymnast um, can be as much as a, a foot. Well, in fact, it can be more, but uh, I suppose you go from Silivash at um, five foot five, although there's a little Japanese girl who's even smaller than that here. Uh, to some of the Norwegians and the Swedes who must be five foot seven. In the case of a gymnast over the height of five feet five, they can adjust the height of the top bar to make them wider. Well, Yuchenko first to go in this third rotation. Straddle leap over the lower bar as a mount. Well, there you've seen the reigning, defending world champion lose her title. I am certain that she cannot recover from that. Well, she for a moment had a mental blank as well because she got onto the wrong bar. She also has a Delchev after the move that she fell from. And she jumped onto the bottom bar and missed out the Delchev as well, so she'll be low on content. I wish I could understand Russian or lip read it. What I love about Yurchenko, though, always composed. Take us through it again, Monica. This is the Kachev. She obviously didn't get enough lift and snatched off the bar. Normally, she would go straight into a Delchev. Now, she could have jumped up and done a giant circle into the Delchev. The Delchev, of course, being another release and catch move, a very difficult somersault, so that's what... Monica was referring to when she's saying she won't get the difficulty there because that's where she's relying for her originality in the exercise. We'd expect this at uh, very most to be somewhere around 9.2, 9.3, but maybe right down to the eights. Yes, I, I think it'll be the nines because the Delchev was probably an extra move and she'd lose 0.1 for that. I wonder what Rodionenko is thinking at this moment. Yurchenko is obviously keeping well away from him. It's quite funny. She is on the left corner as she looks at the parallel, uh, the isometric bars podium. And he's way over on the right-hand corner in the middle of the arena, looking straight down it, not looking at her, not attempting to have any contact with her. Of course, Yurchenko does have a history for making quite a few mistakes because in the past she's dropped down at the European Championship. She dropped down into 10th place after a mistake on the bars. The worst weight a gymnast can face. When you know you've made a mistake, and you just want to see how bad the judges think it is. A lot of discussion over this one, so I think some judges probably are deducting 
more for the missed move than others. She looks as though she's glued to the spot. She hasn't moved from that spot. I don't think she's even taken off her hand guards yet. Absolutely mesmerised. There are the panel of judges. They've now had their discussions. Sorting out 9.125. Well, she now knows exactly how Katie's elbow felt. On the floor, Oksana Omelenchik. Just watch this first little tumbling run. will be onto their third tumble run but she's onto her fourth by now having done a double run and a flick straight back just for good measure how about that then <laughs> Amelia Enchik's already scored a 10 in these championships and to my eye that routine was even better but she can't get 10.5 don't think the crowd have seen anything like it before Thunderous applause. She's back onto the podium to wave to them. And out of a double twist, walk out, then into a flick flack, a dive back Tinska, an Arab spring, a one and three quarter Arabian dive roll to stand. And then to finish with that double pike back. No, sorry, that's the that's the opening tumble routine. A double pike back somersault, not content to leave it there, puts two in on the end of it. Really has made a speciality of coming out of tumbling runs, and instead of stopping where most people would be content to have landed a, a major tumble safely, just shows how well she knows where she is and carries on. That, the formidable face of Madame Simonescu, the Romanian head judge on the floor. I think there are a number of judges who got a 10 up there, and I think she doesn't think it is a 10. She's seen a fault, and she's trying to convince them. How she can't smile after that routine, I'll never know. Well, she's been at the center of a number of controversies in her time. I mean, particularly, I remember in the 1980 Olympics, that huge and very lengthy row about Nadia Comaneci's mark on the beam. She thought it was worth more than 9.85, and it, had it been upgraded, Nadia would have got the gold medal. But in that occasion, it stood, and that went to Elena Davidova. Crowd hissing and booing. Well, Madame Sim Simonescu is out of her seat and she's gone over to the jury. Don't know what she has to say. And Emilienczyk smiling in anticipation, hoping that she'll get the 10, talking there to Kolejnikova, who's the Russian number six. She's a delightful little character, Emilienczyk. 
she doesn't actually look as if she cares too much whether it was a 10 or not because she knows it's very very good and i think she already knows it's going to be very close to it and that will do for her one thing we can say for certain she's just taken the lead there's mrs simonescu i'd just love to know oh a smile there she is the people she's talking to that the the jury they have at every gymnastics competition and here it's a, a particularly high-ranking one of course uh, a jury who watch all the routines as well and who are there to guide the judges when there's a difficult decision like that not too pleased yes I can see four tens up on the judges scoreboards now of course they show them around the arena at one stage you never saw them but there's a little scoreboard by each judge four tens there and two 9.9s so it's three tens and a 9.9 that count and that comes out to 9.975 Camelia Bonilla from Romania, now on the floor. A nice lifted double back it was supposed to be Pike, but she picked the first part up straight. in there from Camelia but unfortunately for her she had to follow Emilianchik who is just something special very high there on that full in back out Again, the long wait. This time, though, I don't foresee as much difference. There it is. Just come up now. Her score, 9.8. Wang Chun from China.
cheer there for Jankus Bro, the Canadian gymnast on the high and low bars. Wang, one of the better Chinese gymnasts on the floor. Her tumbling isn't of a really high standard, but amazing mobility and good interpretation to the music. on all of her double backs there because now that gymnastics has got even more advanced they're taking off marks for cowboying the, tuck, the double back somersaults and the tuck shape her spring flick flack whip back flick flack one twist and then turns it into uh, a difficult element by the punch front somersault this is an example of where she lose marks by splitting the legs really badly. Quite untidy when we actually see it in slow motion. Now is she going to match Omelenchik or are they going to get unlocked? She'll need a 10 to take the lead. That superb 9.975 from Omelenjic on the floor. But Shushanova, of course, still got that piece of apparatus to come, and she also scored a, a 10 in the team event. Here she goes on the beat. Beautiful flick-flack, double-back, sorry, flick-flack, back somersault, back somersault. of hesitation on those two turns. of difficulty well executed a couple of minor wobbles that were hardly noticeable and here's the first tumbling pass on being flick whip back whip back and she made no doubt about that here the dismount Tremendous power off the beam, and she lands all her somersaults so well. Seems to know exactly where she is, however many twists and turns she does in the air. Kolesnikova, obviously acting as her mentor and passing in front. Viktor Gavrichenko, there it was in the blue tracksuit. That's a coach. The Russians put him up on the podium with her in the team event where normally they'd have had Rodionenko. There he is. And the idea of that was that she'd had that dreadful experience on the A-bars and they just wanted to give her confidence. And it seemed to work because she had a magnificent voluntary confidence. There's the mark. 9.9. .9, still in touch, but now we have a clear leader, Amalenchuk. from China and nice 
Nice double back straight. Pity about the landing. somersault with a full twist in the first somersault as her final routine Chinese so much improved the girls were very weak at the last world championships on the vault in the floor lacked leg power the Chinese coaches before the championship started we were talking with them and they said they've been working extremely hard on conditioning for the floor and the vault And that's a look at the last tumble. Not too well executed, but uh, after a minute and a half of flying around the floor, no wonder. Well, she looks, in fact, as if she hurt herself a bit coming into that. So much power goes into that liftoff. Uh, a lot of strain on the ankles and feet when they come down from those double backs. Yes, we often see the girls with bandages on their ankles, but this isn't always because they're injured. It's more a preventative measure to help them have stability in their ankles on the landings. They do so much training that strappings do help in a preventative way. And really the, the worst position to come into a landing as far as injury goes is short. If you come in short, a great jar. We saw Koji Gushikin, the, the great Japanese, well, the Olympic champion at the moment, do exactly that yesterday in the men's competition. I think she obviously perhaps was just puffed out, John. She seems to be recovered now. And there's her score, 9.725. Tremendous progress on the floor there for the Chinese. And a chance to see the replay of Daniela Silivas's vault that went on earlier during the rotation. The full-twisting Sukahara. Silavash having a very good competition. She's got consistency here, and that's the one thing you expect the, the young 15-year-old sometimes not to have. Oh, real lift, and she needs it with her height. There's the twist. Lands that very well. Silivash is 9.75. Gabriella Farnrith. This again on tape. Uh, a bars exercise. That unusual back straddle over the low bar. Nice Jaeger.
two giant circles. Shoot, front somersault with half twist. Oh, and a smashing mark, 9.975. Good competition for her. Ulrika Klutz. Again, this is a replay of something that went on earlier during the rotation. This is Ulrika's vault. Sukahara straight. Could have done with being a little bit higher. These Germans having a very good competition. Look at the determination on her face as she chases down that runway. Didn't really hold the straight position very long, but landed it beautifully. Nine point six five for her score. Dagmar Kirsten, the third East German. On to the A bars. A beautiful forward giant there into the Jaeger. Some lovely work. Dagmar Kirsten's coach is on the podium with her tonight, so obviously great expectations of her. Beautiful dismount, a shoot front piked with a half twist. Lovely polish all the way through that routine. Got real extension into that dismount, and that's the, the difference between just completing your exercise and completing it in such style that you gain that extra vital point one out of the judges. Clear circle to handstand. And the long swing into the giant circle, piking onto the bar, the shoot, and then the half twist. Just a little jump back on landing. And how's about that, she says. And her score, 9.9. .9. Standing up to the pressure well, the East Germans and a very young team. There, the position after three rotations. There is Omelenchik. They're still in warm-up. A real buzz now around the arena. Going into this final rotation, we're certainly going to have a new world champion. And will it be this little girl, Oksana Omelenchik? Well, with all those gymnasts on 68 score, it really is going to be an exciting finish. The audience is buzzing, the judges are buzzing, the press here clitter clattering with their typewriters and talking. Here she goes. And a beautiful Yurchenko, not in the straight position, in a puck. A gentle bend of the knees allowed whilst twisting. Yes, she bounced back on landing, but that uh, a very complicated vault. Let's look at it closely now. There's the arrow spring onto the springboard. Good twist, gets right round very square, and just that bounce on landing, it'll be a good score, but she'll be looking to eliminate that on her second vault. Nine point eight five for her first score. She's got another chance. Of course, should she make a perfect ten, it's all over. She's got it. But she's not going to get a perfect ten for that. Again, that little bounce back, a good vault, but not a great one. Just look at the power going down that runway. The horse is only fifteen centimeters higher than she is. A good extension for the Arab Spring. Chalk on the floor to signify where her hands go. Shallow flight on. Good taxing with the hands. But a little bit untidy during the puck shape and that jump back on the landing. The horse, of course, lower, but not much than she is. And there it is, 9.9. .9. She's pushed it up. Now, she'll be thrilled to bits to get that out of the way. But she's going to have an agonizing wait now. 
because in this last rotation, Shushinova goes fifth on the floor exercises, so she's just got to wait and see whether she's done enough. Camelia Voinier. That's a very nice vault. Sukahara straight with a full twist. Amazing the amount of speed these girls gather in the runway. Two feet off, throwing the arms through, joining the feet together. But in slow motion, we can just see the ragged end of that vault. Bonier waiting for her second vault. 9.8 for the first. Of course, in the girls, the highest score of the two vaults counts. Same vault again. Not quite such good control on the landing, though. See the marks on the runway where the girls measure their strides. And the parting of the legs in that first half twist and the jump back cause deductions from the 10. And 9.8 it is to score. the gymnasts having to have numbers on their back to identify themselves to the judges because they're not all known by name and I think sometimes it's just as well so we expect impartiality Alina, Driana from Czechoslovakia, chalking up for starting her A-bar exercise. They really do take great trouble on these preparations. The springboards adjusted to a millimeter. In fact, on the vault, you even see them bring out a, a measuring tape and run it the whole length of the runway, and every different Volta likes the springboard at a slightly different distance, according to their speed, their height, from the horse. Just as vital here on the A-bars. Well, I hope magnesium carbonate is uh, not bad for the digestive system, because uh, they certainly eat plenty of it before they go onto the bars. Czechoslovakians donning some very pretty leotards. Feminine pink and yellow and blue. Kachev. Back straddle. We saw that in the set exercise. They're allowed to repeat it in a voluntary exercise. The Czechs all bunched very, very close together. Viviana in 16th place when we came into this final. Shoot front, half turn to finish. Slow motion shot. This is the upstart, a basic move in gymnastics, but it leads to so many movements. And the shoot front with a half twist. Very clean routine there. Removing the handguards and the sponges. They look after their gear so carefully. Placing 
carefully in their bags and name all of their equipment. Very personal items in their gymnastics. And it's not all unfriendly, John. A nice little friendly gesture there. No, they're very friendly to each other. Uh, they've got this marvellous concentration when they get on. There's a mark, 9.775. That's excellent. She might even overtake her teammates, and that'll please her, no doubt. 5.25, Sabrina Ma. Still with the A-bars. Sabrina from the famous Scats Gymnastic Club in California has something like 2,000 members. This, of course, the piece of apparatus that uh, Jennifer Say, her teammate, had such a nasty fall on in the team event. She's safely through, very accurate routine. Lovely, slim, elegant gymnast, Sabrina Ma. Don Peters, a really fatherly figure. For better or for worse, he always helps his gymnast stand from the podium. He's disappointed for them and happy for them. The Stolder circle there on the bottom bar. The stoop through. A form of a basic upstart. And again, this upstart action. The clear circle around, not putting the hips on the bar. Straddling the legs there to get some extra speed in the giant circle and building right up to her dismount. It's a really high double back and a tidy one too. She's content, she's just looked up, seen that score, 9.75, a good series from her. Daniela Silivash there. She is next on to the A-bars. Daniela from the same camp as Katie Zabo, a startling little gymnast. Quite an achievement to even get over that bottom bar at her height. It's a brilliant combination, but on the Delchev, she caught her left foot, and that slowed her down, and for touching the apparatus, she should lose at least a tenth. Katchev, not particularly high, and slackness of the knees when she came out of it. There the dismount. Lovely little exercise. Daniela Silivash had a tremendous competition. You wouldn't believe it from the face. Well, she touched the bar with her left heel, and to her, that's a dreadful mistake. Just shows what perfectionists these girls are. They really do expect such a lot from themselves. They put in the training, and they want a good performance, and anything but the best from themselves, and they're really not satisfied. Great cheers in the background for Andrea Owok. The local girl. Well, we can't wait for the score for Silivash because here is where the world championship's going to be decided. What a moment. Shushanova needs a 10 to become world champion, and she scored 10 in the team event on this very piece of apparatus, the floor. So we know she's capable of it. Here goes. Can she repeat it?
well executed exercise with all that pressure on her remember that Omelenchik managed to get tens from four of the judges but it wasn't enough and it gave her 9.975 now what are they going to give to Shushanova because should she end up with 9.975 she'll be first equal a look at one of the magnificent tumbles it's the first one double back straight as far as I was concerned the only thing that the routine lacked was a nice big smile totally different style of gymnast but can she add the world championship to the european championship that she won in the spring those cheers not the cheers for a mark for shushanova that's for the american and there it is 9.975 she's tied with omelenchik well they'll now have to go back onto the count back stage and see who is in the lead on the third rotation as they can't have a joint winner unless they were equal on every piece of apparatus well at the end of three of course it was Omelenchik who was in the lead having been on the floor before Shushanova Well, we're waiting on the checking there, but we think Omelinchik has got it. Really, a little bit of luck with her. The floor, her best piece, and she happened to get onto it, Monica, before Shushanova. Yes, well, we'll just have to look back and see what Omelinchik scored on her third apparatus and see what Shushanova scored on her third. That's the general procedure. I've never seen a joint world champion announced yet. Well, if we're a little bit hesitant, we haven't had this sort of situation before. That third piece was the floor for Omelenchik, and of course, she got a 9.975 there, and that's where she took the lead from Shushanova. Priyanka Demireva there on the beam, but I think uh, everybody really totally preoccupied Finding out whether we're correct. A nice Arab spring straight back on beam. A little hesitation on landing. Some brilliant mobility. That's a beautiful movement. It's called the Shapaznik of a planche originated by Shapoznikova, who incidentally is from the same camp as Yurchenko, coached by the famous Rostorovsky. Another nice combination, but just not positive enough. No reason at all why she shouldn't stop herself from wobbling, but it's all down to belief in oneself on this piece of apparatus. And a heavily cowboy tuck there on that double back. She'll lose marks for it. Demir Eva, a good performer from Bulgaria. There's the flick flack and the straight back with the hefty wobble at the end of it, but she just manages to stick that leg up in the air and stop herself from coming off. Well, the deliberation still going on as to what's going to happen in splitting Omelenchik and Shushanova. We think that this business of going back to the third round doesn't necessarily mean their third round. It means the third piece of the Olympic rotation. Now, of course, that starts on vault, goes to asymmetric vase, goes to beam, and then goes to floor. So it comes back then to what the two girls scored on beam.
the milling around the outside of the apron of the podium all of the gymnasts discussing amongst themselves their marks and the possibility of who is our next world champion Shishinova and Omelenchik the two gymnasts brought back into the event by the Russian camp. It just shows how accurate the Russians are in assessing the ability of their gymnasts. Tactically, not a very pleasant move for Mostapanova and Baraksanova, but we've got to hand it to them. They do know talent when they see it. And really, the... Uh the mystery grows with checking back here like mad and they both scored 9.9 .9 on the beam so we can't split them there and in the background we can just see a glimpse of Natalia Yurchenko the reigning world champion but I'm afraid that title isn't going to last much longer no Yurchenko down in seventh place after the third round that's a floor score you saw there. She's got no chance now, really, of uh, getting up into the medals. In fact, she's got no chance at all of getting up into the medals. But, of course, that won't stop her wanting to finish her competition on a high note. Of course. Beautiful mount. An Arab Spring straight back somersault to land on one leg. Oh, and she really is hesitant. I bet she's glad that uh, the championship wasn't all riding on that. Of course, the girls have yet another competition. The individual apparatus championship, so Yochenko can treat this as a warm-up. We know she's preparing for her other famous mood, move that she originated, the Yurchenko flick. She has to push her hips forwards to be able to go up and land right back down on the spot and then wrap around the beam, which, remember, isn't round, so it's not very comfortable. Even on the simplest turn, the rise onto the toes, immense concentration into the end. And the slight step back on landing. Well, far from perfect. We're very, very critical about our gymnasts, but we have seen some tremendous gymnastics here at this World Championships. And I think we've all learned a lot. What's lovely there, there was little Omelenchik going to congratulate her. There's the Yuchenko move. Tremendous back suppleness needed there. Oh, and uh, a caring little gesture there from Rodinenko, and that's enough to send Yurchenko right into tears. A little bit of sympathy. Well, there's Yurchenko's score, 9.8. We're still trying to unravel this uh, tie that we've got in, in first place. And to help me, I've got... Uh, John Atkinson, the technical director of the uh, uh, British Gymnastics Association. Now, we think, John, it goes back through the pieces in Olympic order, don't we? Now, they got the same score on floor, which is the, first, uh, the fourth piece, the same score on the beam, 9.9, .9, which is the third piece. Does it then go back to the A-bars? Um, in the opinion of Alan Berger and Lee Seymard, who are running this competition, this will be a tie, unless somebody beats both of these gymnasts and as yet you know this pool is not finished well although the pool's not finished uh, the scores after the third round do make that impossible I am I am actually quoting Alan Berger in this instance marvelous so that's the latest situation let's hope she's right if anybody knows she ought to well their confirmation Omelenchik and Shushanova the joint world champions Canadian Gymnastics Federation
cérémonie protocolaire des 23e championnats du monde de gymnastique. Au total des épreuves, individual all around. Robert, all the gymnasts Champion on the monde. podium. And there, Omelenchik and Shushunova. World Champion. Little Oksana Omelenchik, just 15 de years old. Soviétique. And Elena Shushunova, 16 Oksana years old. Of course, already the European champion. And there they go together onto the gold medal position. They were great rivals through the competition, but they'll happily settle there for a double gold. Ellen Berger and Yuri Titov presenting the medals. Troisième et médaillé de bronze, third and bronze medalist de la République démocratique allemande from the German Democratic Republic, Dagmar Kersten. And a great triumph too for Dagmar Kersten of East Germany. Wonderful effort for her. Bronze medal for East Germany. Well, a bit of a lopsided podium there, but uh, they are the medal winners with joint gold, Oksana Omelenchik and Elena Shushinova. Third to Dagmar Kersen. Fourth, another East German, Gabriela Fanrich. Had there been one slip by Kirsten, Farnrich was even on the same position. apparatus group, and Kirsten had to go up position. first. And she was leading to the bronze medal position. Katie Zabo comes in in fifth place. That dreadful error on the beam, her first piece of apparatus, ruled her right out of contention.